In this lesson, we are going to learn how to find the slope intercept form when we are given the graph. And in this lesson, I'm going to do quite a lot of examples with you guys. And I'm going to show you how to find the equation when it's a diagonal line like this. But I'm also going to show you vertical and horizontal lines. You know, maybe in class your teacher gave you a line that went vertical, for example. Or maybe there was a line that went horizontal. I'll also be showing that in this lesson. If you can remember from the previous lesson where we learned how to find the slope intercept form when we are given two points, then this lesson is going to be really easy because what we do is we look at the graph, okay, and we look at the line and we go find any two points that are easy to read. For example, you're not going to try to find this point over here because yes, we can see that it's got an x value of 3, but the y value, that's a bit difficult. So you're always going to try to find a point that is very clear to see what its coordinates would be. For example, we could use this one over here, because that point over there, I'll just call that point 1 for now, and then what's another one? We can use this one over here, and that could be point number 2. So make sure that you do agree with me, maybe pause the video, but point one's coordinates, uh, the x value there is a four, and the y value is a negative two. Point number two has a x value of zero, because it's over there, and it has a y value of negative four. Now we can just use the same techniques that we learned in the previous lesson to find the equation. So we know that the equation is y equals to mx plus c. Now, if you think that the rest of this lesson is just going to be easy now because it uses the knowledge from the previous lesson, then just hang, and, hang around because I also want to show you how to handle a situation where, as I said earlier, sometimes the line can be horizontal or it can be vertical. And then things get a bit weird, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. So remember, to find the slope uh, or the gradient, we use that formula that goes like this. m equals to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember that from the previous lesson? It's the same thing now. So remember how this works? You could go to the y value for point number 2, which would be this one over here. And then the y value for point number 1, which would be this one over here x value for point number 2 would be there, and x value for point number 1, which would be that one there. So then what we do is we go fill that in, so that's going to be minus 4, take away, and then there is this is negative 2, so you just go fill that in as negative 2, and then 0, take away uh, 4. And I just want to make sure I've got that correct. Yep, then you just go type that all in on your calculator, and that gives you a half. So that means the gradient or the slope is a half. So we can do that. Then remember to find C, what you do is you choose either point number one or you can choose point number two. So I'm going to choose point number one. Um, so this x value here would go um, over there. And then this y value here would go over there. So then you end up with minus 2 equals to a half multiplied by 4 plus c. And so that's going to be minus 2 equals to a half times 4 is 2. You can just use the calculator for that. And then if you had to get c by itself, it's going to be negative 4. So then we could write our final answer. Sorry, it's all the way up here. But that would be y equals to the slope, which was a half, and then negative 4. So that would be the answer there. Now, for the rest of this lesson, I'm just going to be uh, doing a whole bunch of examples showing this. By the way, some of you might have thought, Kevin, for the c value, um, I know that that's the y-intercept. So if I can see on the graph that the y-intercept is minus 4, can I just go fill that in instead? And yes, you can do that. I only realized afterwards that we can actually see the y-intercept, which is the part where it cuts the y-axis we can actually see that. So you could have just written that down. And so for the next questions, I'll actually just do it like that. So here's our next or our first 
practice example. So we know that the equation is y equals to mx plus c. Now we know that straight away, check this out guys, we can see that the um, the line is going through minus four. So that is your y-intercept. So if you are comfortable with that, you could go and put the minus four. And then I just realized something. We don't even have to go find the slope if we don't want. You know, like the slope of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If we can already see that the c value is minus four, then to find m, all we really need to do is just go find a point somewhere on the graph. Don't use this one because we've already used that. So just go find any other point. So this one here. Now that point would have the coordinates of three and three. You don't have to do it this way, as I said. Uh, you can use the original method that I showed you, but this way is actually pretty cool. So we know that that's the x value, so we would put that over there. And that's the y value, so we would put that over there. And so then what we have is 3 equals to m times 3 minus 4. So 3 plus 4, because I'm taking that over to the left, equals to 3m. And so 7 is equal to 3m. And so if you had to divide both sides by 3, let me just show you, divide by 3, divide by 3, then m would be 7 over 3. So then we could say y equals to 7 over 3x plus the, oh, the, the intercept, the y-intercept was negative 4. That's actually quite a cool method. So by doing that, we don't have to use the m's formula. So you can decide what you are most comfortable with. So here's another example. So determine the slope intercept form. So we can say y equals to mx plus c. Now we can see that the y intercept here is going through five. That's a y value of five. So you could go fill that in immediately. So that would be mx plus five. Then to find m, you could find another point. So for example, you could use this point over here where the coordinates of that point would be x is 1, y is 0, okay? x is 1, y is 0. Then you could go plug that into this equation to find m. And so the x value there would go over there. And the y value would go over there. And so then we can say 0 is equal to m times 1 plus 5. And so 0 is equal to m plus 5. And so if you had to get m by itself, it would be negative 5. So therefore, y is equal to negative 5x plus 5. Now we're going to start looking at vertical and horizontal uh, lines. Now these are very, very easy. There is no y equals to mx plus c. You don't use that for horizontal or vertical lines. It's way easier. What you do is the following. You go to the place where it's cutting the axis over there, and you ask yourself, is that an x value of minus 4, or is that a y value? So is that an x value, or is that a y value? That, that is an x value of minus 4. So, and then what you do is you ask yourself, if I look at every single point on this line, what would happen to the x value? Maybe pause the video and think about that. What is the x value? at every single point on this line. Uh, Kevin, the x value is always gonna be negative four. Ah, exactly. So what we can then do is we can just say that this equation is called x equals to negative four. That is the answer. How easy is that? Now, if it's a horizontal line, I want you to go to the axis that it is intercepting, which is over there. Now ask yourself, is that a y value of five or is that an x value? That is a y value. Now, if you had to look at every single point on this line, what can you notice about the y values? Ah, there would always be five. So for that one, you can just say y is equal to five. That is the answer. There is no having to go calculate the slope. None of that. You're just gonna say y equals to five. We're not gonna use y equals to mx plus c. And so here's another example. So. Remember, when it's a horizontal or a vertical, you don't use y equals to mx plus b or c, okay? What you do is you just look at this little value over here, and you realize, oh, that's a y value of minus 5. 
So then if you look at every single point on this line, you would notice that the y value is always minus five. And so this one's equation will just be y equals two minus five. Here's the last one for this video. So if you just look at this line, it's vertical. So you're not gonna use y equals two mx plus c. Instead, you're gonna say, okay, that x value is four. And in fact, if I look at every x value on this line, it would always be four. And so what I can do is just give this one equation, well, we can call it the line x equals to four. And so that would be the answer for that one.